Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pastor Mike's Quick Shots, episode 39. And I'm your host for this show, Pastor Michael Mitchell. I uh, wanted to say welcome to tonight's episode, and I wanted to say uh, I'm going to try to make this brief. I've got uh, two more more things on my list than I do time to get them done, and uploading and scheduling is probably not part of that. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't help but this week think about what we've been talking about. We've been talking about community and what the church was supposed to be. And I went back to, I went back to John 13. And I went back to that chapter because that is where we were on Monday, Thursday. On Monday, Thursday, we, we gathered and we met and we talked about the events that happened in the upper room just before Jesus's arrest and persecution and what happens in that moment is jesus becomes the servant he washes the disciples feet he then provides for them his body and his blood uh, for the forgiveness of sins now it's not necessarily what he does but why he does it he does it as a symbol he does it as a symbol of what he's supposed to do for us, and in turn, what we're supposed to do for each other. And so I find it ironic, though, that in the midst of this, he is there with people that are not really all in. He is making community with these 12 people, and not all of them are on the same page. They're not all together. They're not going in the same direction. You have you have Judas, who's about to betray him. You have Peter, who's going to deny him. And you just have all of this constant flux that's happening within the 12. One of the things that I think about is what Jesus, though, continues to do in the midst of the chaos. I started a, another devotional series, Go Figure, right? Uh, created for Community, Lessons from Acts Chapter 2. And it's from Hope International. And so far this week, it's been really good. One of the, one of the things that they talked about, and, and this is, again, why I came back to John 13, was because they were talking about John 13. And, and this is from, uh, I think, two days ago's devotional. If the 12 disciples, Jesus' closest friends on earth, experienced broken fellowship then we should expect to face challenges of our own in pursuit of community. In John 13, Jesus predicts that two of his followers will either betray or deny him, and still he offers bread and wine, his body and blood, and washes the feet of those who would turn their backs on him. Wow. This is a guy that knows what's going to happen. He tells Peter he's going to betray him or deny him. He knows Judas. He even says, Judas, go ahead. I know what you're going to do. Go ahead. After he washed their feet, after he gave up himself for them, he knew that they were going to do this. This is his definition. This is Jesus' example of community. People are going to fail you, Jesus says in this moment, and it doesn't matter. It's okay. Wash their feet. Go, go to, uh, to find out the why. If you go to John 13, 33 through 35, you find out the why. And Jesus is talking to his disciples. Dear children, I will be with you only a little while longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I'm going. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. For your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Loving each other. How many times have we been involved uh, in our church or in our community and we know that there is not love there? We know that there's tension. We know that there's discord. We know that there's disagreements. And, and people on the outside are watching this. People on the outside are paying attention to this. 
when we don't love each other inside the church, why would anyone want to come in and be part of that community? The other part of this, obviously, is knowing that we're not going to do it on our own. We've got to have Jesus' help. We've got to have the help of the Holy Spirit. We've got to be able to rely on him and his guidance and leading if we are going to be what he wants us to be. Another part from the same, the same, uh, the same devotional created for community. Here's the paradox. If we tell ourselves that living in community is easy, we'll likely be surprised and then discouraged by its inevitable challenges and eventually give up. Yet in acknowledging the difficulties and still choosing community immersed life, we face the reality of the world in which we live and can move toward collectively reflecting the beautiful unity of the Trinity. That's pretty deep. That is pretty deep. Friends, I'm not sure where you are on today's journey, but I pray that you are forgiving and you're willing to love in spite of the fact that people aren't perfect and that you're willing to create a community where people want to be here because they know that even in the midst of mistakes that they're loved, even in the midst of not doing the right thing, you're still getting your feet washed and we're still all a work in progress. Friends, I hope you can join us uh, 9 a.m. Sunday at Maplewood and 10.30 a.m. DeGraft uh, for worship. And we're going to talk about what it means to have faith in this community and how becoming the church of faith empowers us to live this life that Jesus is calling us to live together. Would you join me in this closing prayer? Lord, may we always be open to you in our innermost being so that our doing is always guided by your will and not by our needs. Please help us to keep our identity so rooted in you that everything we are and do reflects more of your wisdom and love. Amen. That is from Dr. Elaine Storkey, Tear Fund's uh, Theology Committee. Friends, I hope you have a great week and I hope that you enjoy this spring weather and that things are getting back to normal for you and that people are getting vaccinated and everyone's enjoying themselves. And I hope that church will soon be a little bit more like normal, but yet a little not. I think we learned some lessons this past year, so hopefully we did. Uh, friends, have a great week and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.